Uh, the next speaker is uh, Lisa Nash, who's the uh, director of the Blue Network, the Blue Planet Network. Um, and she will be talking about the, the sharing the power of uh, community health clubs. So uh, please welcome Lisa, Lisa Nash. I just clicked to advance the slides. Okay. Well, thank you all for coming back, for being part of this. I was personally so energized by what I heard this morning and a lot of the questions. I actually went back and had a long conversation with Jane, who many of you uh, heard come up and ask her question beforehand, about what is really so powerful. And I'll give you the, the summation, because I am at the, the end of this whole story about H2O plus and how do we use the CHCs. But the couple of key learnings, if you take nothing else from what I say, it's all about how do you take this learning and share it around the world. Because all of you are experts in what you do. All of you probably have heard a number of these things before. But what our challenge is, is how do we get this learning out around the world? How do we advance the conversation? How do we introduce the CHC concept and have it butt up against another concept? And how do we learn from that? How do we apply it to different cultures? How do we make it relevant? So that's, that's what I want to talk about. And a couple of things that I would posit is, number one, there are many, many different ways of sharing learning. We're doing it right now. All of you will take what's been said this morning and say, OK, that's interesting. I can add it to what I'm doing. But how do you share learning? You do it through timely reporting of programs. You do it through using real stories. And I bet most of you thought that the most important thing that Anthony, that Juliet, that, uh, that Dan, that Arno talked about, yes, the statistics, but it was the stories of the kids. It was the stories of how people's lives are changed. And how do we take those stories and really make them real around the world? We also want to be able to show people how these programs, the CHC, are relevant in other communities. How is what's happening in Rwanda, what's happening in Zimbabwe, what's happening in, in Uganda, how is it applicable in the DRC, as Anthony talked about? Or how is it applicable in India? How is it applicable in Vietnam? If this model is really as powerful as we all think it is, it should be applicable everywhere. It should be applicable in California, where I come from. It should be applicable in Europe. But what are the problems that it's trying to solve? And then thirdly, how do we really use the power of everyone here and your colleagues to advance that conversation? So that's sort of what I'm most interested in. Um, and just a little bit about why I run an organization called Blue Planet Network. We are a nonprofit, but we are not like Dan's organization, we are not like Juliet and Anthony's organization. We are focused on building a global community of water and sanitation organizations and using technology, using the internet for what it's good for, which is connection and education, to bring groups around the world together, whether they're big, whether they're small, whether they work in Rwanda, whether they work in Ind Indonesia, whether they work in Nicaragua, but who are all focused on water and sanitation so they can share their knowledge with each other. And so we together can collectively improve our impact. And so what we do is bring those organizations together. And as you can see, we don't just talk about bringing civil society organizations together, but we want to include donors and funders in the conversation. We absolutely need to, con to involve communities because as we all said, and we said in the beginning, if the learning is not led by the community, if it's not influenced by the community, if it isn't managed by the community, it will go nowhere. We all know that, but that's very, very important. We focus on how do we promote collaboration around water and sanitation groups around the world? How do we make knowledge transparent? Because it's not just about saying, I did a great report, and here's my pretty pictures, and life is over. It's all about saying, here's what I learned along the way, Here's what the challenges were. Here's what I learned from the challenges and how I made it different. It's all about measuring. 
All of you, I'm sure, in your own way are doing measuring. And what we really want to do is share that knowledge. You are all learning so much. All of our members are learning so much. And we want to share that so it can scale. And scale is the most important thing. We're talking a lot about it today. How do you take a great idea? How do you apply it around the world? And how do you make it relevant? Because it's going to be different in northern Uganda versus southern Uganda. It's going to be different in Kenya versus uh, Buenos Aires. But you really have to be able to take the core learnings and make that happen. And that's what we're all about. So just 30 seconds on what Blue Planet is all about. We have four key programs. We build a global community of water and sanitation organizations around the world, of which Dan's organization, International Lifeline Fund, and Juliet and Anthony's organization, Africa Ahead, are both members. And we bring them together online to have the kinds of conversations that only practitioners can have, so that they can learn from each other, give each other advice. We have something we call our peer review service. We're literally, our members peer review each other's programs in the planning stage to try and better them. It's not to say, we're better than you are. It's to say, how can we make your program better? And so a group from Nicaragua might be able to contribute knowledge about how they've used biosand filters to a group in Honduras. But then a group in Cambodia can say, well, we tried that, and here's how it didn't work in our area. So there's a very, very elaborate service we use. We make monitoring tools and services available to all of our members because a lot of our members are small and medium-sized organizations who do great work in the field but have challenges trying to find the funding or the methodology to be able to monitor and evaluate on a long-term basis. And I would welcome everyone in this room who is using monitoring and evaluation tools who's found things that they really love to come and talk to me afterwards. Because we are not trying to promote one way versus another. We're trying to make all tools available to everyone. And we want to be the world's largest megaphone for things that work. And then finally, our technology and analytics platform we use to share knowledge. And you'll see a little bit about how we're sharing the learning specifically of the H2O Plus program in northern Uganda. But as an example of how do we share learning around the world. So we started in 2006 uh, with 18 members. We're now up to 112 organizations working in 27 countries. And they actually manage their programs from the planning stage through the implementation stage through the ongoing monitoring and evaluation stage on the platform. Blueplanetnetwork.org is where you can go take a look at it. I'm happy to talk to any one of you. But really, it's all about making it relevant. And our members, together collectively, are helping by year end 2 million people get access to sustainable, clean water and sanitation. So it's all about collective action. What can they do together, and how can we help them? So specifically in terms of the community health club model, what is it that we share? What do we see the power? And what are our members telling us is the power? We heard it all this morning. It's, it's really been validated again. Number one, it's about community engagement and accountability. As Jane was telling me during the break, one of the things that's going to be very interesting for her in seeing how this program works in a potch is this community has been ravaged by years of war, by years of being in displacement camps, and by going back to their communities and by having people say, what do you think? How can this work for you? Come and share your ideas with me. Let me sit with you and learn from you, not just tell you what this program is all about. It's really empowering, not only in terms of sanitation and health, but in terms of everything. So community engagement, but also accountability. We go in and help Africa Ahead. We help International Lifeline Fund measure the programs and share the results online with the world because Everyone can do what they do when they talk in conferences. But when you put it up on the internet and anyone can go take a look, maybe they'll learn something. Maybe they'll show us how we can make a better program. But it gets the word out. So we are all about transparency. It's all about capacity building and income generation. As we talked about CHCs 
and we share this online, help people learn not just about sanitation and health, but about all the other things that Anthony and Juliet walked you through, about the clean cook stoves that Dan walked you through. This is a powerful model. It can be adapted to many other things, and that's the third point, that it is adaptable to support multidimensional community needs worldwide. So even within Africa, you heard Anthony talk about how the environmental health desk in the Ministry of Health in Rwanda has just been elevated from a desk to a department. I hadn't heard that. That's really exciting to me because we're also talking with them about adapting the CHC model, not just for rural communities, but for starting after school clubs for secondary school girls in Rwanda, in Rusizi, the same district that they're doing the CHC test, to see if we can really scale that knowledge about sanitation and health to girls when they're in school to keep them in school and also help to teach them income generating skills so that they are better prepared when they leave school and are already connected with potential employers. So that's a very different way of using the CHC model. And there are many different ways. In Vietnam, we're talking with one of our members about using the CHC model to help them with deworming programs because they don't want to just dispense pills. They want to teach about sanitation, about hygiene, about the importance of taking the pills and why deworming is so important in the schools so that they really go further. So that's a whole other way. We're talking to communities in India about using the CHC model in conjunction with the water and sanitation committees after the, you know, the, the wells go in, whether they're boreholes or whether they're shallow dug wells, so that they can work together, as Dan said, as extra monitoring capabilities and actually merge the two together. So this is a model that we have seen work in many different places around the world, but we would love to learn more about your ideas. And just a very quick um, example of what this looks like on our platform, and I would once again invite everybody to go take a look. Every organization and has their own dashboard and their own project. So this particular project, what's going on with H2O Plus in Apache, has its own dedicated area on the, uh, on the platform, on Blue Planet Network, that talks about what it's all about, what's happening, where is it going, what have they learned. You can drill down from that high level into really seeing down to the location, every place where there is a borehole, every place where there is a CHC, every place where there is a hand washing station. And then you can drill down even further and get more information about that. So it goes down to the actual, what we call the output level, you know, where the well is, where the CHC is. So every CHC in every community will be able to input all its knowledge. And Juliet and Anthony are already doing a tremendous amount on their own website about collecting and sharing data. And we're going to be integrating that into our platform so we can then share it with the world. So that is my 10 minutes on why this is so important, but why it is so important to take it and leverage it around the world. Because there is so much we have to learn yet about the model, but we can only do it by testing it and adapting it in other ways. And, and we want to do what we can with Blue Planet Network, but we also invite you to give us new ideas about how do we scale it and prove that it does work. So thank you.